the massive flooding that northern Trinidad experienced today can easily be blamed on global warming or excessive weather patterns. But shouldn't we also be considering the role that government has had in turning a blind eye to the denuding of our mountain ranges, indiscriminate cutting by developers with approval and by those who are allowed a free hand without approval under the premise of humanitarian shelter. Whether one is an approved investor or an unapproved settler seeking a piece of the pie, the impact on public interest when floods occur like this could easily cause loss of life, limb, and property of those who are not responsible for the degradation. Where is the Ministry of Planning and Development in all of these illegal, unusual land grabbing and or land development applications which are so easily approved and or to which the government turns a convenient eye based on the argument of humanitarian sympathy. Is there any sympathy in loss of life or property? I'm here with the workers. It's not nothing we could have done without 45 minutes of heavy rain for all the river banks burst. And that was it. I think as well you're raising really a serious question that is grabbing international attention. That's the question of climate change. It is quite clear that the world's climate is changing, things are happening, and I'm listening to discussions around the world at all levels where it is obvious that man's conduct, man's production of various goods and services has been having a very devastating impact on Mother Nature and her goodness. Hi, I'm Gary Abood. It's clear to us that the flooding is a consequence of poor public administration of approvals granted for developments that are not necessarily in the interest or in the public interest. Land clearing of mountainsides in Town and Country Planning Act require a certain amount of trees to be left and yet over and over land developments occur where entire mountains are denuded. Certainly you'll have an excessive amount of water and mud running off into the lower lands which happened yesterday. So when the Minister of Public Utilities was asked if he could comment on the cause of the flooding, he gave a, with the greatest of respect to the Minister, what appears to be a comment that, well, thunderstorms caused it. He wouldn't consider that the EMA rubber stamping land development without considering the retention of tree cover, water retention in the event of flooding for hillside developments, he wouldn't mention that farmers often cut lands excessively and without EMA approval, without any benching or water retention. He wouldn't mention that drains have not been properly cleaned and maintained. Instead, what we hear from the government is plans to astroturf a public park with a holy burial ground. How much water would wash off? Certainly the Prime Minister must be commended for his vision. In this instance, like in all, he has the full authority to, to, to overrule any decision made by any person in Trinidad and Tobago. The country belongs to the dictatorship of the democratic dictatorship of the Rowley regime. And that is an issue for the constitution to be amended so that individual ministries and individual officers in ministries can have a level of independence to govern and to execute their duties. And certainly what we saw happening yesterday, certainly we should take more responsibility as administrators in the determination of mechanisms that could be implemented and maintained to ensure safety. Lives could have been lost. Thank God no one died, but tomorrow is a new day and the flooding and the degradation of the environment and the impact of bad public administration will continue.